Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a brand new feature coming in .NET 9 that significantly improves the user experience of using a wait async when it comes to tasks. Now, tasks in general in .NET are confusing and the problem that this specific feature solves could technically be solved before .NET 9, but it is really painful to do so. In this video, I'm going to show you what the problem is, how it works, and how .NET 9 significantly improves it to the point where it's just as easy as it would possibly be. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple console application, not much, uh, and I want to introduce you to the problem we had. Now, the problem has to do with awaiting multiple tasks, but not the typical way. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have the following calculate method where I have a number I pass in, then I generate a random number between 500 and 5,000, so half a second and five seconds, then I await for it using task.delay to simulate some processing, and then I'm returning just the order because I want to print it to show you what's happening behind the scenes. So I have a very simple method like this, and that is here to simulate some sort of asynchronous processing, whether that is sending an email or talking to a database or anything that can be async really. Now, what if I have a list of tasks because I know what sort of tasks I need to do uh, beforehand, and I generate a list of tasks that do this processing. Now, in this case, I'm just going to say uh, tasks over here, and I'm going to use the new uh, C sharp collection syntax over here to initialize this list. And all I'm going to say is calculate one, and then I'm going to have six of them. So, or five, uh, maybe five is enough. One, two, three, four, five. And a very common scenario we have is what if I want to wait all of them at the same time? Well, you might say, Arnick, obviously do await task dot when all and pass down your tasks. And then in the end, you can have the results over here. And if you want to uh, print them, for example, you can say uh, for each result in results, console dot write line, and then pass down the result. And if I do that, watch what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now, these all have random delays, but as you can see, they are all printed at the same time, one, two, three, four, five. So even though they are uh, awaited in parallel of each other, they still return in the final result. They still get awaited in the end in a single operation because this is a task when all operation, when all of them get awaited, then and only then give me the results and then do something about it. However, what if you wanna process tasks as they get completed, because yeah, something like this will work if you need all of them to finish in the end for you to do your calculations, but what if all of them or the processing for all of them can happen independently? Then it will be more efficient and better for you to just process as they happen because then you're gonna spread the load as well on your operations and it's just what really you'd want to do. Plus, task.whenall has some very, very nasty implications uh, when it comes down to exceptions, and I have talked about this in a separate video. And this problem is so big and so common that 12 years ago, Stephen Tobe wrote this blog, Processing Tasks As They Complete. And this is a lovely blog, even though it's old, it's still relevant. We haven't really evolved in that department in 12 years. So as you can see, classes you've never seen before, dealing with schedulers, run to completion, faulted this, tons and tons and tons of caveats and situations you might get into, if you want to do something like this. So before I show you how Microsoft will improve the situation in .NET 9 and basically fix it, I want to show you how you could have done it if you were to sort of hack it around. Uh, and before I do that, I want to quickly just refactor this list over here because yeah, I can just keep adding tasks over here like five, six, seven, eight, but I could actually just improve this by using link to do this thing. So I can say enumerable dot range from one to let's say five, and then I can say select, I can get the index and I can say calculate I, which in return can also be turned into a list, which again, it can be turned into calculate. And this is way, way more elegant, way, way more clean. And this is just one of the many use cases that our brand new course from Zero to Hero, link in .NET will cover. That is a brand new course just launched by Hannes Lauer, who did the anti-framework course, which also is using link 
heavily because anti framework is using link to write queries that are turned into SQL. So link knowledge is extremely, extremely valuable and every .NET developer should know how to use it. Examples like this show it. You'll end up writing way, way less code for a single operation using link. And I'm happy to announce that this course is free until the 21st of April, as long as you buy any other course on Dome Train, no matter how expensive or cheap it is, the link course will automatically be added in your account. I think that the link course is going great with the anti framework core course because of the nature of the two courses, but it's up to you. You can choose any other course you want and you can get it for free and it's yours to keep forever until the 21st of April. Link in the description. Now back to the video. So how can we process tasks as they get completed? Well, I can do the following. First, I can have a while loop here and I can say while tasks dot any interesting so i'm checking the list for any items in a loop which you can see where this is going i can say finished task equals await task dot when any and i'm passing down the tasks and this will return one task that represents a completed task from that list so i'm going to get that out and i'm going to say tasks dot remove the finished task from this list. And then I'm going to say console.write line await that finished task, which would have completed at this point. So I'm just going to get the number back. And if I do that, watch how my code works now. I'm going to start getting these responses sort of streamed as they happen. I don't have to wait for all five seconds or whatever, as they complete in different orders. As you can see, I am going to get them. And again, this is a hacky way to do this and it's hacky because you sort of need to have a list you need to have a construct that allows you to remove them because you want to process them as completed and then it has a couple of awaits you have to remove from the list cost wise this is a pretty expensive operation to do something like this so dotnet 9 fixes this how by allowing you to do the following now we have a brand new method in the task class called when each very interesting concept quite a few overloads the idea is that you can now have something that returns an i async enumerable which means you can use an await for each operation so i can say await for each task in task dot when each and i'm passing down the tasks and then that streams the tasks back as they get completed so i can say console dot right line await task and this will give me the number simple as that no lists involved this is actually extremely efficient behind the scenes so if i go ahead and i run it as you can see i'm going to get the exact same behavior as before four five one three two as they get completed they get printed really really nice i should point out that there's a new git package called async x or async extensions basically that does have this functionality already in the form of a method called order by completion so if you wanted to write something similar you could do the following you could say async i async enumerable when each get an array of tasks of type t here and then say for each tasks in order by completion so it's going to get ordered by completion yield return async task and you could do something like this so i can just comment this one out and i can say await for each task here and then in when each tasks and loop around them here you go in fact this approach i waited for you so you don't even have to do that uh, and if i do something like this then as you're going to see same behavior as before as they get completed i'm gonna get them streamed back but now it is in a bcl it is more efficient as well because the code behind order by completion is not as efficient as what the built-in bcl will offer more specifically if we go over here and just quickly see it just in case you're interested there will be an allocation of a task completion source every time which the bcl's approach doesn't have so way more efficient we're going to just delete it or just comment it out in case you want to grab the code and play around with it but that's exactly how we can do it right now in dotnet 9 and it is very efficient it is very good and it's a feature that i personally would love to have so i'm glad it's finally added but now i wonder from you what do you think about this feature and did you have a workaround in place for something like this are you using async extensions leave a comment down below and let me know well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding